It's movie lover 120 here and i'm here with episode 7 of my halloween horror movie reviews and this episode is going to be for none other than a 1979 sci-fi horror film a film directed by ridley scott and of course star Sigourney weaver which released in 1979 has become an iconic film in the sci-fi and horror genre and that is of course for ridley scott's alien the first one the one that started that whole franchise which has only one good sequel one that's actually even better than this movie, and Alien 3, Resurrection, are trash sequels, and, Al and Prometheus and Covenant are okay prequels. And the AVP crossovers can go fuck themselves. Yeah, so anyway. That's gonna be episode 7. The film was re so, those of you that know, obviously should know, the film was released in 1979, was directed by Ridley Scott, and stars Sigourney Weaver, and of course was at first negatively received by critics, who were not too kind to the sci-fi genre at the time. However, over the years, it has gone on to be praised by critics as now one of the greatest sci-fi horror movies of all time, even being praised by former hater Roger Ebert. So, what's this movie about? Well, in the distant future, the crew of the commercial spaceship Nostromo are on their way home and they pick up a distress call from a distant moon. The crew are under obligation to investigate and, this, and the spaceship descends to the, on the moon afterwards. After a rough landing, three crew members leave the spaceship to explore the area on the moon. At the same time, they discover a hive calling of some unknown creature. The ship's computer des deciphers the message to be a warning, not a distress call. When one of the eggs is disturbed, the crew realizes that they are not alone on the spaceship and they must deal with the consequences. So yeah, that's the plot of Alien. I absolutely enjoy this movie. It's probably my second favorite film in this series behind Aliens. And here's why. Memorable serves memorable iconic characters such as Ripley, played amazingly by Sigourney Weaver, and the Alien. The Alien, also known as the Xenomorph, itself also became an iconic movie monster, one of the most terrifying movie monsters in cinema. And the, and the Xenomorph, believe it or not, was designed and created to convey a fear of rape, and it succeeded. Yes, some amazing designs, of course, you have Ron... Ron Cobb, Gene Morbis, Gerard, and Chris Foss, who designed the movie's human aspects, such as the spacesuits and the Nostromo itself, and the late H.R. Geiger, who designed the movie's alien aspects, which exceeded at being very disturbing and helped popularize the artist. Noteworthy is that Foss, Ginger, Morbis, and Old Ban had previously worked on Alejandro Dorowski's canceled film adaptation of Frank Herbert's Dune. Which, by the way, guys, as now has another film adaptation directed by Dennis Villeneuve that's going to be released on October 22nd. The idea of a space film about a killer alien creature named Xenomorph goes inside of the spaceship named Astroma, finding to kill a Xenomorph before the Xenomorph kills everyone on the ship at the time is very original. And the movie even has a lot of other great and memorable characters, but not limited to two. Like, you know, Ripley, there's this near Bass character in the third act of the movie before her more Bass improved in the second film. She averted being a damsel in distress, so she is in her under underwear at two points, much like a scantily clad female character. She averts audience expectations by killing the alien. Dallas is also a great character, even though that he is similar to Kirk, he's not the one who kills the alien, subverting audience expectations and 
Ash is also a great character, although he is similar to Spock, he turns out to be an android trying to keep the alien alive. But it doesn't kill the alien either, also subverting audience expectations. It's like, subverting audience expectations here actually works, unlike a certain Star Wars movie that tried it, which you all know the name of. The audience subvert, subverting audience expectations here actually really works well. And it's actually done right for the right times. And the poster is very iconic, especially the quote, In space, no one can hear you scream on the poster. Some excellent acting with Tom Skerris, Sigourney Weaver, and late actor John Hurt, may you rest in peace, etc. Like, Jerry Goldsmith's soundtrack is even impressive, even if a lot of it ended up not being used, which I'll get to in a little bit. There's even a lot of scary scenes that became iconic, especially the infamous chest burster scene. The filming of the scene actually did terrify the actors of Veronica Cartwright's reactions were genuine. And unlike most other horror films which are over-reliant on pointless gore, violence, and jump scares, this movie successfully manages to be scary by utilizing extreme suspense, tension, and horrific and disturbing imagery, which it does amazingly, and even some great-looking sets. Most of the special effects are also amazing, especially the alien suit. As the least scenes that were restored for the director's cut are also interesting. The cocoon scene is particular is considered to be one of the most one of its more disturbing scenes. And so many awesome quotes, like example include this thing bled acid, or who knows what it's gonna do when it's dead. Or micro changes in air destiny, my ass, it's a robot, ash is a goddamn robot, and of course, final report, the commercial Starship Nordstrom, third officer reporting other members of the crew. Kane, Lambert, Parker, Brett, Ash, and Captain Dallas are dead. Cargo and ship destroyed it. I should reach the frontier with six, with six weeks. Little luck, the network will pick me up. This is Ripley, the last survivor, the Stromer signing off. And some brilliant sound design that enhances the creepy and anxiety-inducing atmosphere of this film. As for the bad qualities, well, there are obviously a few bad qualities in this movie because some of the special effects were painfully obvious, most notably the cuts between Ash and a mannequin version of him. At least it's excusable for the time period and the budget the movie was made in. And a lot of Goldsmith's swore got cut out of the film, which angered the composer and caused him to swear off working with Scott for years until Legend. And the movie does have a couple of plot holes, as well as the characters sometimes making foolish decisions. Like, was a really smart doubt to go after the alien by himself, but all in all, I can overlook all those bad qualities because this movie's still a masterpiece in cinema. If you are a sci-fi and horror fan, please check this out. What are you waiting for? Go watch this. This is just one of the best movies in cinema history and one of the most iconic sci-fi and horror movies of the 70s. Like, it's really worth checking out. And if you are going to watch this franchise, just watch Alien and Aliens and that's it. Please avoid the damn rest. I mean, you can watch the prequels if you want, but they're just okay, really. I mean... I mean, please, for the love of God, avoid Alien 3, avoid Alien Resurrection, and please, by all means, avoid the Alien vs. Predator crossovers. <sighs> but, moving on from that, how am I going to rank Alien? Here's how I'm going to rank it. I am going to give Alien a 10 out of 10. Alright, and that's it for my review of Alien, or this is it for episode 7 of Halloween Horror Movie Reviews. So, what's going to be episode 8? Well, episode 8 is going to be for yet another sci-fi horror movie that was released around 8 years after this. No, it's not the sequel, guys. It's a different alien creature, and it's not the thing. It was This movie was released in 1987. Yes, the next episode is for the very first Predator movie. The creature that alien would be some reason meeting in 2004, but even though they did not need a crossover. But until then, that'll be it for this episode. Thank y'all for watching. And if you like this and want to see more, then don't forget to like, subscribe to Movie Lover 120.